Okay, welcome back to our next exploration of um, number theoretic computations and leading up to the RSA algorithm. And today we're actually going to introduce the idea of RSA. And then we're also going to look at this crucial piece of RSA, which is uh, modular exponentiation. So we won't quite see why RSA works the way it does today, but we'll see the how part. Um, so this is this should all be review for you. Like what is cryptography is about sending a message um, that only this other sender, uh, the receiver, can decrypt. So we usually talk about Alice and Bob, um, and like Alice is sending a message to Bob. And what's important to know is that we, the messages that we're sending as humans, we think of as letters or you know a sequence of letters or something like that. But in the computer, they're all just represented as numbers. Um, so they're just big numbers, but they have to be of a fixed size. So whatever, depending on your key length and some other things, uh, determines how big they can be. But um, everything that you send, whether it's a video or whether it's an audio file or a text message or anything else, um, first has to get converted into numbers. Um, and so and just, this is just a simple example. If you have a message of H-E-L-P, then um, depending on what your bit length is of your key, maybe your bit length is large enough to encode 16 bits at once. So then what, because each letter is eight bits, and I guess in my example here, for some reason I'm doing this as five bits, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's fine. So we would just encode each of these five bit numbers into like a 10 bit message, then send um, those. So the message is like a list of numbers And um, each one of those is going to be encrypted separately. I should say that there's a whole area of uh, practical cryptography where you look at how do you actually modify the message in each block. So um, there's different modes of encryption that have like ciphertext chaining and other things like that. You would learn that if you were taking, if this were a real like computer security course, which we offer, I think it's IT430, but it's not this class. In this class, we're mostly thinking about the algorithm. So we're really just going to focus on the operation of taking one number, like 261, which encodes some amount of information. In this example, 261 encodes these two letters, but could encode anything. So we're just trying to say, how do we convert that number into an encrypted value and then back into the decrypted original message? In public key encryption, which is what RSA is, um, and it's the basis for a lot of what the internet, how the internet works. The key idea here, key idea is that you don't have any um, pre-shared information, so you don't get to um, have a key that you communicate ahead of time or anything. Um, you just have a public key and a private key. So the public key, has, it can be shared by anyone, can be published on your website. Um, here's my public key, and it doesn't reveal any security to have that. And then the private key is hold only, held only by that individual. And so what that allows is that two people that haven't had any like secure meeting before can have a secure communication where you know that only the owner of this public key will be able to, um, to decrypt my message. So now RSA in particular, how does it work? This is the whole RSA algorithm. So one of the reasons there's, there's other algorithms for public key encryption, RSA is still used in many like web applications if you click on the little security icon in your browser you can see whether rsa is being used nowadays it's being phased out a little bit in favor uh, for some more recent things like based on elliptic curves for example but one of the reasons we're studying is because it's the um actual algorithm to do it is very deceptively simple but it's it's deceptively simple because it's complicated to analyze so in encryption we start with the message so this is also called the plain text. And then to encrypt it, all we do is raise that to a power of modulo n. So there's a n, which is the modulus. And it's shared uh, between the public key and the private key. So this is public. And then we have a secret exponent and a, a public exponent e and a secret exponent d. So when you encrypt, Encrypting is what anyone can do. Anyone can send a message to Bob. So you just take your plain text message and you raise it to the uh, public 
exponent mod n, and that gives you e, which is the ciphertext or the encrypted message. And to decrypt, what Bob will do is take that ciphertext and raise it to his um, secret or private exponent d modulo the same n, and that will give back the original message. Now again, why does this work? Why does it give back the original message? That's what we'll look at next. What we want to look at first, though, is just how can this happen? So how do we actually, you can see here that the, the encryption and the decryption operations are really doing the same thing mathematically. They're just taking a big number, raising it to some big exponent, modulo another big number. So one number raised to another number, modulo a third number. How do we do this quickly? Um, what is this algorithm? going to look like. And to answer that, I want to go to this slide here. And I want to think about this example problem of computing 21 to the power 2021 modulo 95. Okay, so this is the uh, example that we're going to look at. And of course, we want to think about how to do this quickly. So what I'm going to show you is a series of four increasingly better ways to do this computation and um, th that corresponds to what we actually do for RSA. So here's a, a little meme to remember that there's four ways. So the first way is we just compute this number as a huge integer. So it'll be like mathematically what we're doing is 21 to the 2021 mod 95. And uh, in many programming languages, we couldn't do this. But in Python, we can do it very easily. I mean, we could do it in other programming languages, but we would have to use another library or something. But in Python, we can compute these huge numbers. So Python lets us do computations with huge integers. It's built into the language. So I can say 21 to the power of 2021. It's a very, very large number that takes up the whole screen. Um, but OK, it worked. And so I can say that value modulo 95, and it gives me the answer of 51. So this gives the right answer, and it'll work, but it'll be very slow. And um, the reason is that this number is very large in size. right? So the size of this number is really proportional to the value of that exponent. So if you think about it, if I added, if I multiplied the exponent by 10, this number would have like 10 times as many digits in it. And so that means if I'm doing RSA and I have like a thousand uh, digits in the exponent, then this number before I take the mod would be too large to even store. Okay, so that's a problem. And what can we do about it is we want to keep all the numbers small. Since we're ultimately doing mod 95, we should be able to keep everything less than 95 as we're going along in the computation. So the second idea is to just start with um, 1, then 21, and then 21 times 21, but take it mod 95. And then this value times 21 mod 95. And then this value times 21 mod 95. And just keep doing that 2,000 times. So we're just going to keep multiplying by 21 and then take mod 95 immediately. Rather than waiting till the end to take mod 95, we do it at every step along the way. Um, so let's see what that looks like. We would start with like x equals 1, then write a loop. Um, 2021 is my exponent, so that's how many times I have to multiply. And I'll just say x equals x times 21 mod 95 and print it out so we can see what's happening. And you can see that it ends up with x equals 51. So it's the same answer that we got before. Um, but now, instead of having to have this gigantic number that we work with, we just have to do a lot of computations with small numbers. It turns out that the, the total size of all those small numbers equals the size of that one big number. But by computing with only small numbers, it's much more efficient. So this is a little bit better. But it still took 2,000 steps to do this. So how could we do this with uh, fewer than 2,000 steps? Well, I'll show you. There's a new idea, which is what's called the uh, square and multiply algorithm. And it's really like a divide and conquer algorithm for exponentiation. 
that sounds interesting. How does it work? Uh, so we want to compute 21 to the power of 2021. The way that you, so what, what does divide and conquer mean when we're talking about numbers? Uh, we can think of it as like splitting this number in half. So what is 21 if we split it in half? It's like, it's about um, 1010. So in fact, 2021 equals two times 1010 plus one. Okay, and so now if we substitute that into this exponent, we can say 21 to the 2021 is the same as 21 to the two times 1010 plus one. And now rewrite this using the properties of exponents that we know as 21 to the 1010 take that and square it, right? So it's two times 1,010. Then what does this plus one mean? Well, remember if you add one in the exponent, that's like multiplying one more time. So this is times 21. So this is why it's called the square and multiply algorithm because what we have now is this 21 to the 10, 10. Now that's a recursive call on a smaller exponent. So this is a recursive, recursive call. And then here's our square. And then here's our multiply. So that's why it's called the square and multiply algorithm. Um, and of course, we would take this mod 95 in order to make everything be efficient as possible. So by one recursive call, we get to slash the exponent in half. And then we do a square and multiply afterwards. And the only additional proviso is that we only multiply uh, when the number was odd when the exponent is odd, right? So why do we have to multiply by 21 here is because we have, when we broke down the original exponent, it's two times 10, 10 plus one. That plus one is why we have to multiply by 21. If it was just raising like to the power of 2020, then it would just be 21 to the 10, 10 squared and we wouldn't need to do the extra multiply. So that's it. That's the square and multiply algorithm. It's a recursive algorithm um, and it's kind of divide, doing divide and conquer in terms of dividing the exponent in half. So I'll show you in code what this looks like. Um, so we have the base case. If the exponent is zero, anything to the zero power is one. Otherwise, we do a recursive call with half of the exponent. So this is the key that the exponent gets divided by half. And then if it's even, we just square that, mod m. And if it's odd, we square it and multiply by a one more time, mod m. So it's always mod m. The modulus doesn't change. The, uh, what, and the a doesn't change either. All that's changing is the exponent is getting smaller in these, these recursive calls. So let's see how that works. Remember, the previous method, we had to do like 2,000 steps, but all with small numbers. Now let's see what happens when we use the square and multiply method. So we want to say 21 to the power 2021 20, mod 95. And I added a thing so it'll trace out these recursive calls. So what we're seeing is this is the top level recursive call. That in turn calls 21 to the 1010 10 mod 95. What's that gonna do? Call 21 to the 505 mod 95, et cetera, et cetera. But how many steps did it have to go down? Not 2000 steps, not even 200 steps. Um, in fact, the number of steps here, I guess is maybe 11. Uh, it's proportional to the log base two of that number. Right, so as a recurrence, what's the cost of this is something like um, a little bit of like a square and a multiply plus one recursive call of size exponent over two. So this means that the whole thing ends up being big theta of log of the exponent time. And that means it's proportional to the size of the exponent and not the value of the exponent, which is fantastic. So if we have a thousand digit number, then we have to do a thousand recursive calls in order to get it. A thousand recursive calls is not so bad. If, uh, if we use the previous method, we would have to do like two to the 1000 steps and that would never finish. Um, so this is kind of the, a big, big game changer. Um, it's much, much more efficient than the previous one. So square and multiply. And this is the best we can do if we don't know anything special about the mod. The best um, in general, if we don't know anything special about the mod. And I should tell you that this is the algorithm that will get used to in 
RSA algorithm to do the um, exponentiation. And it's also the same one. There it happens to be a built-in function in Python to do modular exponentiation. Exponentiation. It's just called tau. So if I say 21 to the power of 20, 21, not my 95, uh, it, it, it really does that same computation I just showed you with my square and multiply algorithm that's just built into Python. And that's the way it works. And you can see kind of that this is very efficient because if I add a bunch more digits to this exponent here, um, it still finishes almost immediately. I can add more digits to everything uh, and it's, it's going to run really quickly. But there's one more thing that we can do, one more trick, when we know something about the uh, modulus. And it this is also important to understand for RSA. So if we know the factorization of the modulus, if we can factor the modulus, uh, in this case, 95 is 19 times 5. That allows us to compute phi of uh, n. So if, uh, phi of 95, this is the totion function. And we know the formula for the totion when it's the product of two primes is p minus 1 times q minus 1. So this would be 18 times 4, which I think is 72. Yes. So 72 is the totion. Now, the thing that we know, which might not be obvious, and here I'll go back to my output here if we... Uh, if we scroll, if, if we went back to the um, this method here, what we would notice is that we're doing 2,000 steps, but it, there's a lot of repetition in there. This has to do with when you were looking at the random numbers, that there's always going to be some repetition. And the period of that repetition we saw was about the totion of n. So in this case, it's going to be 72. What does repetition mean now for this exponentiation is when it goes back to 1. So we can actually take the exponent mod phi of n. So this is the last trick, which we can't do unless we can factor the exponent. So that's why we can't do it in general. But we can take the exponent mod um, the totient phi of the modulus. So that means that 21 to the 2021 mod 95 is the same as 21 to the 2021 mod 72. So we take mod phi of n in the exponent, and then there would still be mod 95. So what does this mean? Well, what's 2021 mod 72? Let's find out. Uh, 2021 mod 72 is just 5. So that means that uh, 21 to the 2021 mod 95 is the same as 21 to the power 5 mod 95. It gives the same result. So if you can factor the modulus, that allows you to reduce that exponent um, much smaller by taking the exponent mod phi of n. So that is the last trick. And in general, you would combine that with the square and multiply algorithm after you've reduced the exponent. So in this case, we could reduce the exponent from 2021, this very large thing, to just, it turns out to be just 21 to the 5 mod 95. And we get the same answer of 51, regardless of how we do it. So what is the moral of this story? In general, the best algorithm is square and multiply. Sometimes we can even do a little bit better if we can compute the totient of the modulus, then apply that mod in the exponent, because we know that these numbers are repeating. Uh, at that rate, and that allows us to do uh, the very fastest way of doing this computation. Um, and so this is a crucial part of RSA because remember, this is how the RSA algorithm actually works to do its job is you take the message or the ciphertext and raise it to this exponent mod n. And uh, so next class, we'll look at why does that math behind RSA actually work and uh, kind of wrap up the whole unit. Okay, thanks a lot. See you later.